Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials, video 28. It's on the electric field of a sphere. And some of the first measurements ever made of the electric field of a sphere were done by Charles Coulomb in the 1700s using a torsion balance. It's really ingenious. What you do is you suspend a charged sphere on one side of a bar, and the whole thing is hanging from this thin fiber that goes to the top of the balance. And then you can apply a charge to it, and then you can bring another charged sphere next to it, and you can measure how much that bar is turning so we can measure the force that's being generated, and therefore the strength of the electric field. And then in the last video, we talked about what generates that change in the electric field strength. And so we found if you add a charge to a sphere, then we start to get this electric field around it. And we can measure that electric field strength. If we take it away, then we take away that electric field. If we add a negative charge, all the field lines are going to go to the middle. If we take it away, then there's no charge. And so as you increase the amount of charge, we increase the field lines. But the one thing we didn't talk about in the last video is what happens if the point at which you're measuring gets closer to that charge. If we've got a charge in the middle, what happens if we decrease the size of that sphere? And we're measuring it now right here, we would find that we're going to have a greater field strength. What happens if we make it even smaller? We're going to have a greater field strength as well. And so there's clearly a relationship from the distance to the sphere and the amount of electric field strength. And so let me show you how we can explore that. I'm using a PHET simulation. What I've got here is a point charge in the middle. So that will represent our sphere. Now it could be a sphere that's larger, but we have an equal distribution of that charge. And now we're just going to use these E field sensors to measure the strength of the electric field. You can see I'm one meter away, and we have an electric field strength of nine volts per meter. And so now I'm going to grab another E field sensor, and we're going to move it two meters away. And so instead of being nine volts per meter, it's now 2.2. Now let's put one 3 meters out. It's 1 volt per meter. And then if we put one all the way out at 4 meters, we're going to get an electric field strength of 0.6 volts per meter. So the next thing I did is I, I put those in a table. So we've got the radius on the left side, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then we've got our electric field strength on the right side. So you can see it doesn't look like it's a linear relationship. It's dropping off pretty quickly. And so what you can do is graph that. I just use a spreadsheet to graph it. And then I do a power regression to try to fit a line to it. And so I got a line that looks like this, 8.8 .8 times x raised to the negative 1.9 power. Now why aren't those whole numbers? It's because I'm not including enough significant digits. And so I could round that to 9 over r squared. And so that's going to fit our data. If you think about it, if we're at a radius of 1, 1 squared is going to be 1. 9 divided by 1 would give me 9. Likewise, if we're out here at a radius of 3, if I square that, 3 squared, I'm going to get 9. So 9 divided by 9 is going to equal 1. So that seems to fit. And so we have this inverse square of the radius relationship. In other words, as we increase our radius, we're decreasing our electric field strength by the square of that radius. And so we just did that using this quick simulation. The actual equation looks like this, where we've got the electric field strength equal to 1 over 4 pi. This is the permittivity of free space. And then on the top, we have our Q, which is going to be the charge over the radius squared. Now this got pretty unwieldy really, really quickly. You can still see that we have our radius squared in the, in the denominator. And so as we increase the radius, then we're really going to increase the field strength. But where's this part coming from? 4 pi r squared. Have you ever seen that before? 4 pi r squared? Well, if you've ever taken a geometry class, you know that 4 pi r squared is the area, the surface area of a sphere. And so this starts to make sense. As we move out in three dimensions, we're decreasing that electric field strength as a function of the area of a sphere. And that's where it's coming from. What's the permittivity? Again, that offers resistance to an electric field. And so that's going to depend on what um, we're measuring the electric field in. But in regular uh, free space or in a vacuum, that's going to be a given. And so we call this Coulomb's constant. And so if you want to solve any kind of a uh, point charge, a distance or a radius away from a charge, how do we do that? So we've got Q, which is going to be the charge of either the point or the sphere itself. We then multiply it times Coulomb's constant, and we're going to divide by the radius squared in meters. And so did you learn to explain the inverse square dependence of electric fields surrounding a sphere? Uh, it's pretty simple, and I hope that was helpful.